they might get a little bit weary or what have you. You know, when we come up around the altars on Wednesday night, I know you've had long days and some are tired and what have you, but understand something. Bless the Lord. God will bless us, hallelujah, and honor us just for the faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord forevermore and evermore. Bless God. Man, it's getting late already. I've got a lot to, lot to cover tonight. Bless the Lord. I, we're not going to be dealing tonight in the area of, uh, in, in the book of Mark. I believe that I need to have a little bit of uh, uh, study and understanding of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of Spirit in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, chapter 12 through 14. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want us to, to uh, see something here because this is where a lot of people, uh, are. they go wrong. A lot of people go wrong is, now bear with me because this is going to be the first time I use this. We'll try to do it. Where a lot of people go wrong it, or where that teaching goes wrong where they say, well, you know, uh, not everybody's to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you can see in the book of Corinthians, Paul says, you know, that, that not everyone will have the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the, the, gifts of the, Spirit, the gift of the Spirit of speaking in other tongues. Well, we need to, to understand there's a difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is your own personal private prayer language, than the gifts of of the Spirit. Paul, understand, look at me, Paul is dealing in, the, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 12th chapter through the 14th chapter, he's talking about ministry gifts to the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? So we need to get that straightened out, bless the Lord, So because if you're in here, and I know that we've got uh, you know some new people and, and what have you, and, and some might not have an understanding of uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you might hear somebody maybe around you praying in tongues or, or uh, you know, maybe somebody worshiping in, in, in another language. And, and some would say, well, that's not supposed to be in the church. Well, that wasn't, it, it's not to be interpreted. It's their own personal prayer language or hotline to the Lord. If you stay in this church long enough, you'll hear and you'll see, listen, somebody give a message in tongues and you'll see interpretations of tongues. Now that's the ministry gift to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is valid for today. And somebody said, amen. It's not been done away with. Hear me, child of God. It is for today. Bless the Lord forevermore. It's a, you can read right along with me here if you would. It, it's, it's a definite work of grace, hear me. It is a, an, an experience that is received after salvation. The prerequisite for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, look at me, you've got to be saved. You can't put, listen, you can't put new wine in old wine skins. Are you hearing me? Lest the, the skin burst asunder. You've got to be born again. Everybody say born again. One more time. Now we know it being born again, hear me, we, we receive the Holy Spirit. We do not teach or preach in here, hear me, or believe that you've got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to make it to heaven. Hello, or speak in tongues to make it to heaven. Some teach that, are you hearing me? We don't believe that, hallelujah. If you're washed in the blood, look at me, you're going to heaven. Amen. Come on, if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you're going to heaven. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. If you've accepted Christ into your heart, into your life, bless God, your name is in the Lamb's book of life. But understand me, hallelujah, there's a second work of grace after salvation, and it's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist even talked about it. He said, you know, when Jesus came to his baptism, he said, I baptized with water, but there's one coming after me. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And that word baptized there means to be submerged. Hallelujah to the Lamb. At, at regeneration, look at me, we've got the Holy Spirit. Hear me. At the baptism, we're submerged in the Holy Spirit. There's a difference. Hallelujah. Look at me. If there's a ship that goes out on the sea and that ship sinks down to the bottom, look at me, 
It's submerged. Everybody say submerged. submerged. And the only thing that's around that is nothing but water. There's, if you go inside that ship, there's nothing but water on the inside of it. You go on the outside of the ship, there's nothing but water on the outside of it. It's submerged. What God wants to do is submerge us in dunamis power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And somebody said, praise God. Dunamis simply means dynamite. I believe God wants his church to be a stick of dynamite. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Number four, every recipient of the baptism of the Holy Ghost will speak in other tongues. Hear me. And we'll get into this a little bit if we have time uh, and show you in Scripture that the people that was baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke with other tongues. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. Number five, read... Tongues are not just babble or chatter. I've heard people say that. You know, all you guys are doing is just babbling. No, I'm speaking a language, listen, hallelujah, that's known in the world, but it's not learned by the speaker. Are you hearing me? Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, hallelujah to the Lamb. It can be a heavenly language, but also, a, hear me, a, a, a language known in some parts of the world. Bless the Lord forevermore. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. There's times when I, I pray in the Holy Spirit, and you'll be praying in one language, and then all of a sudden it switches over into another language. Anybody ever do that before? And I, as you keep praying for maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes, hear me, or whatever, it'll switch into another language or another language. There'll be several different languages that you begin to speak, and some would say, well, what are you speaking? Hear me. I don't know, but it sure does feel good. Because he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That word edify means it's building me up. It's charging me up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. It's more than just babble, and it's more than just chatter. Hear me. I don't care what theologians say. Listen to me, child of God. Hallelujah. It's real, and it's for today. Bless God forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. I believe the church needs to operate, hear me, in the power of God's Holy Spirit and not man's programs. Listen, God does not anoint programs. He anoints people. People is what he anoints. He don't anoint a man's program. Bless the Lord forevermore. The anointing rests on the people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, tongues are not just babble or chatter, but actual languages spoken by someone in the world that speak in tongues is very valuable to the believer now look at this as one man said let's listen to this those who are opposed to the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues have an argument those who have received it have what experience. an experience hallelujah i've had people come up to me and tell me how i've been wrong you know you're wrong by speaking in tongues you know what i tell them you're too late you're too late. You should have come before I ever had any knowledge of it or before I ever received it. Because after I received it, look at me, there's no devil in hell going to take it away from me. Look at me. It's real. It's real. It's a Pentecostal blessing and I know, I know it's real. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of people, they tag the Pentecostals and say, all you guys want to talk about is tongues. What a lie. What a lie. What, we talk about all different other things. Salvation is the number one thing. Hear me. But the reason why, you know, we're tagged because all we talk about is tongues, you know as well as I do, if you say, well, I'm a Pentecostal church, and they'll say, oh, you're those tongue talkers. They're the ones that bring it up. Am I right? They're the ones that bring the argument up and say, well, you're all, that's all you guys want to talk about is tongues, 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 tongues. No, I want to talk about Jesus, 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 because he's the baptizer in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But I've got an experience. I've, and I, you know, I shouldn't have put that on their experience. I should have said, I've got a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hear me. If we've got relationship with Jesus, we've got relationship with God the Father, we've got relationship with the Holy Spirit as well. One of the, one of the greatest things that I want to do when I get into heaven I want to talk to the Holy Spirit. I talk to him now. Hear me. But I want to see him face to face. 
Stop and think of this. Some would say, you mean tell me you really believe that the, uh, the Holy Spirit is really a person? Yeah, the Bible says it, uh, the Holy Spirit, He will. It didn't say it will. He will, meaning He's a person. Are you hearing me? Our spirit of, well, with personality. He can be grieved. He can be hurt. Hear me. Paul said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Stop and think of this. So he's got feelings. Hear me, child of God. I want to talk to him. You know why? Because he's the one that lives inside of me, and he's the one that's sanctifying me. Look at me. He's got a lot of work to do. And he's got a lot of work to do in you. And I got, I got a funny feeling that, you know, when you sit down and talk with him, he'll say, boy, you was really a rascal in this area when I was trying to tra- take this out of you, and you wouldn't allow me. I was trying to cut that branch off of you, and you say, no, no, I want that sucker shoot. I want that on there. You know, that, that, that's my idol. Don't cut my idol off. And he said, finally, after through a lot of tribulations, through a lot of trials, you let me lop it off, and now you're bearing more fruit in that area. Hallelujah. A whole lot of things we can talk about. Are you you hearing me, child of God? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Two of the greatest hindrances concerning spiritual gifts. Hear me. Even in Pentecostal circles, you hardly hear of anybody teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit are the gifts of the Spirit. And the reason why, listen, uh, uh, spiritual gifts is because, number one, of ignorance, and number two, fear. Say it with me. Ignorance, fear. One more time. Ignorance and fear. Hallelujah. Ignorance, Hosea 4, 6. My people, what? Are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Hallelujah. It wasn't, listen, that they, they wanted to, re, that, that they, the, the knowledge wasn't there. Hear me. They rejected the knowledge. Can I tell you something? Vice versa, you either accept the gifts or you reject the gifts, one of the two. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm just simple-minded enough to accept it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And as I said before, hear me. Hallelujah. I've got a relationship. Other people might just have an argument. Thank God that I've got a relationship and I can base it upon the word of the living God. Hallelujah, as you see in Acts 2, 4, and we'll go there before long. Bless the Lord, hallelujah, as the Holy Spirit come into their hearts, hear me, and baptize them. They all spoke with tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Can I tell you something? I got the very same thing just like they did in the Bible. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I don't know about you, but listen, hallelujah, call me what you want, but I'm blessed. I said I'm blessed, hallelujah. Fear, everybody say fear. Hallelujah, Timothy, Paul speaking to Timothy said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Faith is God's greatest weapon and fear is Satan's greatest weapon. Hear me, hallelujah. Faith will plunge you into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fear will take you away from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen if you would please. Bless the Lord. We're to walk by faith. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. What should the Pentecostal experience bring to the believer? And to the, uh, to the believer, the church and the city, to the believer, what? Power. One more time. Power. One more time. Power. To the church, unity. What happened when they baptized in the Holy Spirit? The Bible says they were all in one place in one accord. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Hallelujah. And cloven tongues of fire set upon all of them and they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. But they was all in unity. Can I tell you something? When a church is in unity, I want to tell you there's much power. But when there's disagreement, hear me, when there's division in the house of God, you're going nowhere but spinning wheels. Hallelujah. How important is it, hear me, to be in unity with one another? Let me give just an example here. Back uh, when I worked a secular job, I used to work at Fruhoff over in Delphus years ago. Bless the Lord. And that's back then we had snow. Yeah. <laughs> I said back then we had snow. They call snowstorms now when you got two inches of snow on the ground. We've got a snowstorm coming. <laughs> that's just around the corner. But back then when it snowed, it snowed. I mean, they'd even let you out of the factories early because... 
you know, the snow was piling up so high that uh, many guys that was out of, out of town, whatever, you know, they needed to get home. Bless the Lord. I only lived about three blocks away and I could walk home, but still, I still took off. <laughs> but man, I'm telling you what, when, when they would release you out of the factory, it was like the Indianapolis 500. Some of you factory workers know what we're talking about. Man, I mean, they'd jump in the vehicles and... And I jumped in my vehicle. And, I, and of course, the snow was like this here. And, and everybody was going up. It was like a little incline. And, man, I mean, they had nothing but ice. I mean, spinning their tires and nothing but ice. And was going through snow, man, up to almost the running boards of the car. And I hit one of those piles of snow and, and it pulled the car right up on the side. And I was stuck. And guess what? I had all those guys backed up. Man, when they went out of the parking lot, look at me. And you're sitting there holding the line up because you're hung up. <laughs> so, they, you know, they, they wanted to get out of there. So all of them jump out of the car. Some was on, on the front of the car. Some was on the back of the car. And I said, I'll tell you what, guys. I said, you know, uh, I'll give her the gun. We'll just give her a big push. I said, okay. So I give her the gun. Some was pushing on the front. Some was pushing on the back. Look at me. I went nowhere. I said, this don't even make sense. I said, let's all get around the back. I'll count to three. I'll hit the gas pedal, and then you can push on me. One, two, three. And I hit the gas, and I come out of there like a rocket. You know why? Because we're all in unity with one another. But if there's division, hear me, child of God, can I tell you something? It's like pulling eye teeth to, hear, to, to get a move of the Spirit of the Lord because God cannot move in, listen, division. That's why it is a must to be in unity one with another. Now, understand me, that doesn't mean that we agree with everything. But here's, what, here, here's the kicker. If we disagree, we must disagree agreeably. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you would. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let us disagree agreeably and not disagree but with with envy and with strife and well I'm going to get even with you I'm going to pay you back no that's not what you need in the body of Christ I'm praying God fill this church hallelujah with people that are just in love with you bless the Lord when you got people in love with Jesus look at me and filled up with Jesus there's no room for bitterness there's no room for envy there's no room for jealousy there's no room for division why because they're filled up I said there's filled up there's no vacancy in their heart. Hallelujah. Their heart is sanctioned and filled up with Jesus. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? If our heart is filled up with Jesus, I've took this saying from my brother Dan. He said, Ter, if you're filled with Jesus, when people step on you, hear me, Jesus is like a honey-soaked sponge. When people step on you, there's nothing but honey comes out of you. Hello. That was a good word. I never forgot that word. Because I had a lot of people step on me. And some of you have had a lot of people step on you and look at me. There's more than just honey come out of this guy. But look at me. The Holy Spirit, once again, is doing a work in me. Hallelujah. I've come a long way from when I first got saved to where I am right now. And you have too. And somebody said amen and amen. So it's a must to have unity in the house of God. Amen. Unity in the house of God. To the city, evangelism. You look at, look at, uh, it's, it's not a bless me club. It's not to come into church and get blessed and then do nothing with the blessing. Hallelujah. Go out and share your food. I'm talking spiritually. Share your food to the outside world. Good word. Hear me. Somebody's hungry out there. Somebody needs the Word of God. Jeremy was talking about that guy that come across his path and from Kentucky, didn't you say, or wherever he's from? North Carolina. North Carolina. Bless the Lord. That wasn't by happenstance. God sent him that direction because he's hungry. Hallelujah. Feed him. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. Down along the line, he give his heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What good does a baptism do? Number one, what? It ushers in the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Acts for just a second here and look at this. We need to have the word here.
Acts 2. Let's look at the, let's 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 look at the first first verse, if you would please. Acts two one. I want to go down through this here, one through four. Let's read it together. Everybody there. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now look at me. What they received right here was their own personal private prayer language. It wasn't the gift. Hear me, child of God. Ministry gift over in, in Corinthians chapter uh, thir- 14, I believe it was, or, or 12, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 12, and we'll go, go to that if we get time. Bless the Lord. This is their, their own personal, private, devotional language that they have. It's not meant for interpretation. Although there was men of all different types of nationalities there, and they said, what is this that we hear these guys speaking in our language? Because they didn't... Uh, they didn't didn't, they was not learned uh, are vised in the language that, that, that these uh, um, nationalities, as is here in them, they, they hadn't learned it. It was just a supernatural move of God's Holy Spirit. And understand me, everything about the gifts is supernatural. That's why a lot of churches won't accept it because they don't accept anything supernatural. But can I tell you something? Hallelujah. You got a supernatural birth. We've got a supernatural Savior. We've got a supernatural Holy Spirit. Everything about God is supernatural. On not the church be a supernatural church with the gifts, hear me, being supernaturally flowing through the house of God. The gifts are for today. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. It's refreshing. Isaiah 28. And I don't know what that is, 1, 2, 3 up there, 11, 123, I don't know what that is, but Kristen typed this up for me. 11 through 12? Okay. Oh, I, that's got the 3 between. It's Isaiah, refreshing, 28. Let's look at it. Flip to Isaiah a second here. Isaiah 28. Kristen went back in the back room. She could identify that for me. I thank the Lord for Kristen. She can type. It took me forever to do this, believe me, because I do this number, one of these. That's the way I type. And understand something. I've come a long way, honey, in technology. (laughs) Still learning. (laughs) Hallelujah. Isaiah, what did I say? Isaiah 28, 11 through... 12. Hallelujah. Now let's read it together. For with st- this Isaiah prophesying about this, he says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Boy, you've got the same thing going on today hallelujah it's there bless God but people don't you know what they just they just talk it away toss it away hallelujah I don't know about you but understand something hallelujah if it's in the Bible I want everything that the Bible says that belongs to me amen if salvation belongs to me bless God I want salvation if the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues belongs to the church bless God I want it if the gifts of, uh, of the Spirit are, in the, uh, are for the church today, I want it. Bless the Lord forevermore. Any church that don't operate or function through the gifts of the Spirit, look at me, that church limps. It's limping. Because these gifts are given for edification and exhortation for the building of the body of Christ. Stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I just don't want a display of rhetoric 
coming from the pulpit. Hallelujah. I want a demonstration of the power of the Spirit of the living God to see people saved. Hallelujah. Born again. See people healed. See people filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. That's supernatural, my friend. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And that's the early church. That's what the early church was based on. Now we're based on nothing but man's programs and very little of the movings of the Holy Spirit. I say let's put the Holy Spirit back in the house of God. And somebody said amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It helps one to pray. Romans 8, 26. The Spirit itself intercedes with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hear me. If you look at that in the Greek, it says it cannot, uh, with, with groanings, uh, our, our, it talks about articulate speech. Bless the Lord forevermore. I want to tell you something, folk. Bless God. There's times you just don't know how to pray concerning situations. There's times I don't know how to pray concerning situations, but the Holy Spirit knows how to pray through me. So I allow the Holy Spirit to pray through me concerning situations. And can I tell you something? When we pray, let the Holy Spirit pray through us. Look at me. It bypasses the mind, the intellect, and it's not your intellect praying. It's your spirit praying. Somebody say amen. amen. It's, your whole, it's your spirit. The Holy Spirit, listen, praying through your spirit. Hallelujah. And praying the perfect will of God. If you don't know how to pray about a certain circumstance, get on your knees and start praying in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. And don't get up until there's a deep, settled peace in your heart. Come on. Praise God forevermore and evermore. It edifies the believer. 1 Corinthians 14, 46. Let's look at this a second, if we would. 1 Corinthians 14. Anybody getting anything tonight? 1 Corinthians 14. What did I say, 46? I uh, thought it was. Where am I at here? Fourteen, yeah, you're right. First uh, Corinthians fourteen, fourteen. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So we can see, hear me, child of God, bless the Lord. When I pray in an unknown tongue, it's my spirit praying. I can sing in the spirit, hear me, and I can sing with the intellect as well. Amen. Bless the Lord. And, and, and uh, it says that when we pray in that, that unknown language, bless the Lord, what it's doing, it says that, that it edifies me. It builds me up. Bless the Lord forevermore. And that word edify simply means build up or charge up. Like a battery being charged. Anybody ever have a low battery? Sometimes we as Christians, we get low batteries. Can I encourage you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and charge yourself in the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Just think. If all of us come to church praying in the Holy Spirit, hear me, just before you come to church and come together, can you imagine the power that would be invested in the house of God? Stop and think of this a second. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a divine means of communication. Of course, we've seen that. It eliminates selfish praying. Romans eight twenty six. once again. Hear me. You know why? Because we're not, it's the Spirit praying. A lot of times when we pray, you know what? When we pray with our understanding, it's about me, 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 me. When the Holy Spirit prays, look at me, the Holy Spirit, you might be praying for some missionary, listen, overseas. You might be praying for a persecuted church, somebody that's gone through severe persecution over in some third world country, over in Iran, Iraq, or whatever. Bless the Lord. Sometimes God will give you that interpretation of what you've been praying about. If you ask him, say, Lord, what is it that I'm praying? There's been times I've been groaned in the spirit and praying in a, in a, in a heavenly language. And, and I said, Lord, what am I praying? Because, man, I mean, it's just like, like your innermost being was coming out. I mean, you're just, just uh, groaning in the spirit, so to speak. And I said, God, what am I doing? 
happening. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you're binding powers and principalities and wicked spirits that you don't even know about. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I said, well, that's good enough for me. That's all I need to know. But I knew I was doing some spiritual warfare, and I mean some heavy spiritual warfare. Hear me through that. And some would say, man, you know, uh, that's weird. No, that's supernatural. That's supernatural. That ought to be going on in the house of God in the name of Jesus or in the people, in, in the hearts and lives of the people in the name of Jesus. Because as I said, sometimes we don't know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit prays through us and it's not selfish praying in the name of the Lord. I like what Jeff said uh, Sunday night, bless the Lord. When you start maturing in the Lord, your prayers aren't selfish prayers anymore. You begin to pray for other people in the name of the Lord. Matter of fact, you start esteeming your brothers and sisters higher than yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, there it is. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Let's read it. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Stop and think of this a second. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. How many people are ignorant of spiritual gifts today? And I'm, that's not, Paul wasn't criticizing. But they have no understanding at all of spiritual gifts. Stop and think of this. And man, I'm telling you, Paul writes almost the whole first chapter of Corinthians about spiritual gifts. I don't understand why they throw them away and they say, well, it's not for today. It is for today. If salvation is for today, the gifts are for the day. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Paul's talking about the gifts that are ministry gifts for the body of Christ or a church setting such as what we're in right now. Now understand, from the 12th chapter all the way to the 14th chapter, he's talking about, hallelujah, ministry gifts to the body of Christ for the edification and exhortation. He's not talking about what they received back in Acts 2.4. Hear me, that's our own personal, private, devotional language that we have before the Lord. And as I said, if you, if you stick around here long enough, when we're up around the front of the altars here, bless the Lord, and we're praying, you might hear a brother or sister praying in a, in a heavenly language. That's not to be interpreted. Hear me. That's not to be interpreted. Hallelujah. Tongues and interpretation, hear me, you'll see, you'll see where, the, where everything begins to die down in a worship, worship service. Everything will begin to die down and then all of a sudden, somebody that's got the gift of tongues, and uh, hear me, they will stand up or wherever they're at and they'll start flowing forth in that heavenly language and everybody's quiet. Hear me. Nobody else is praying in a heavenly language. It's all organized by the, Holy, by the Holy Spirit, by God Almighty. God is a well-organized God. Hallelujah. And then somebody else will give up, get up and give the interpretation of what he said. Some would say, well, man, you know, why would they want to do that? I don't know. You ask God. God's the one that put it in order. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Tongues and interpretation equal. Well, prophecy, and, we, and as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm speeding along because I'm losing time here real quickly. Bless the Lord. And there's so much I've got to say and so little time to, to do it in. And some would say, well, you know, take all the time you want. Well, you can say that because you don't have no kids going to school. And you don't have to listen to these, them back there that's, that's teaching these young ones. <laughs> Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to interject something there when you're talking about when that calms down, somebody speaks in tongues. You always find out when someone's got the gift of uh, of tongues that it's in order right it's not interrupting god in another nope. part of service it's always in order at the right time time yep the time and you know that the spirit gives that timing instantly let me say this it's open floor hear me you can you can put in what you want to put in or ask questions what have you while while we're going through this bless the lord you you never know things until you ask questions amen and if you got something that you can inject or into the into into the teaching tonight Bless the Lord. That's fine. Well, I, I can see right now that we're going to have to probably carry this over to next Wednesday, what have you. I should have done this on Sunday morning, but Sunday morning is really not the time to do this. Hear me. Because you've got visitors, and some of them need saved. And they, ha they have no understanding of what this is. So I encourage you, hear me, child of God, I encourage you, get those CDs and DVDs. They're free. Don't cost a dime. We give them away. We, we do every, every service, we do it. 
So all you got to do is put your name down on that paper, and Tom will look at that and say, well, so-and-so wants this, uh, the date of so-and-so, and and, uh, he'll have them up here, you know, within, uh, well, whenever he gets, real quick. I I mean, he's he's right on the spot uh, getting them done. So they're free, and then after you get them, bless the Lord and, and give them away. Give them to somebody. Let somebody else use them, or just keep them in your library. And just, you know, when somebody starts asking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you say, well, here, take this home and view this, and then come back and let's talk a little bit about it. Bless the Lord. Just as easy as that. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But anyhow, uh, the gift of tongues, hear me, and interpretation, uh, the Spirit of God is very organized. Now, I've been in some Pentecostal circles. I'm telling you what, it was just like here in Corinthians. Paul had to straighten the Corinthian church out. Because you know why? Every one of them was coming in speaking in tongues. If, if, if you read through the 12th chapter through the 14th chapter, you'll see where they was coming in, and even some of the preachers were standing behind preaching in tongues. And he said, what good's it going to do? Nobody's going to get edified. Less, hear me, they speak in some intelligent word that they can understand. It's like me going to a foreign country, hear me, hallelujah, I've got to have an interpreter. I speak English, I know what I'm saying, but they don't know what I'm saying out there. But when somebody interprets what I'm saying, bless God, then they get blessed. Everybody's edified. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But Paul had to put things in order in this church. Understand, the women sat on one side, the men sat on the other side. Hallelujah. And Paul said women ought to keep quiet in the church. That's all in all this, you know that. Women ought to be quiet in the church. You know why? Because the women, listen, they was unlearned. They was uneducated. They didn't have education like we do now. We don't, know, we don't under, fully understand the setting that was pay, that, that when this was wrote. Hear me. Hallelujah. They'd holler cross to their husbands. What did the preacher mean by that? And what they was doing was causing a bunch of confusion in the house of God. Can you imagine that? Sitting over here and your wife saying, Honey, what do you mean by what he's talking about there? And there's no said, well, I think this is what he mean the preacher's up here trying to preach. <laughs> what kind of confusion is that? And then everybody coming in the house of God and all they're doing is praying in tongues. And he says, if somebody comes in, an unbeliever comes in, they'll say, you guys are nuts. And you know what? What God meant for good because of the confusion and the devil operating in confusion, you drive people away. Hear me. Hallelujah. But if things are done decently and in order, bless God forevermore, tongues are a sign for the unbeliever. That they'll say, hey, truly this is something supernatural. Truly, hallelujah, something supernatural is going on in this church. Some, it scares them to death because they've never seen the supernatural take place. Are you hearing me? But thank God, look at me. Ever since I've been saved, I have been around the supernatural of the Lord God. And you'll be surprised, hear me, of people that call me on the phone that believe in the supernatural only in the other direction. And they want liberated from it. Hear me. Folk, I want to tell you something. You've got to have the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen, that dunamis power to pray and bind these hindering spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and cast them asunder in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. But anyhow, as you look at the gifts that God gives to his body here, Paul's dealing with public ministry gifts. He asks these questions. What's the questions? He asks these questions are all what? Apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? all the gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Look at me. No! He's talking about public ministry gifts here, not your private devotional gift. Altogether different. Do you have an understanding of that? Altogether different. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. What they received here is not the gift of tongues for public ministry. This was their own personal private prayer language for worship and praise unto God. You can pray in tongues but not have the gift of tongues. Does that make sense to you? 
I can pray in a heavenly language but not have the gift of tongues. But understand something. Look at me. I've got the gift of tongues. I can, I, I, I can use that gift, but normally I don't use that gift unless God tells me to use that gift. So somebody might be able to operate in the interpretation of that gift. Are you hearing me? Because some believers that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, hear me, child of God, God has given them giftings, but they're afraid to step out on those giftings. Are you hearing me? And if God tells me, I want you to pray in tongues, I'll pray in tongues. I'll give a message in tongues. And then God will start to deal with the, with the one that has the, the interpretation. You need to speak up. Right. Hear me. And sometimes, you know, it might settle for a little while. That, uh, that speaking in tongues, that, that message that goes forth, and, and then it stops. And then all of a sudden there's a quietness. And there's a, there's a season maybe of, of a time that the Lord's dealing with people's hearts. And then all of a sudden, somebody start giving the interpretation of it. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk, some would say, well, I'm scared to do that. I'm afraid I might fail. Can I tell you something? Hear me. You're human, and many people fail. I remember when I was in Delphi's Assemblies of God, there was a man there that he got up. And bless his heart, he went to, to give an interpretation of tongues. And he said, Thus saith the Lord God Almighty, help me, Lord. <laughs> Does that mean God kicked him out? No, the man was faithful to try something. Hallelujah. He wanted to be used of the gifts of the Spirit, but it was evident he didn't have that gift. <laughs> Hear me. Bless the Lord. But you know where I learned? I learned a lot of this in my own personal private prayer. Devotional times with the Lord, praying in the heavenly language, and I'd interpret what I was praying. And if you can do that at home, you've got the interpretation. You can do it in the church setting in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just because you're... Now, don't, please don't get confused. Just because you... Listen, because, just because you pray in tongues doesn't mean that you have the gift of tongues. In a public service. Some do. Some don't. God gives that. Listen. Liberty. Or liberally. To all those that desire it. Desire earnestly. The best gifts. That's what Paul said. How many in the body of Christ. Are desiring spiritual gifts. How can you desire them. If they're never taught on. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I can hear them people. Back there already. Hallelujah. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities in tongues. Hallelujah. This is not devotional tongue. Hallelujah. The devotional tongue is for everyone. Everybody say everyone. Hallelujah. Look what it says here, and we're going to close with this. Bless the Lord. Acts 2.39 says this. Help me. Read it. For the promise is unto you and to your children... And to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. You can compare this with Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. Do that in your own study. Hear me. Take notes. Bless the Lord. Get the CDs. Hallelujah. Take them home. Look, it through, look through it. Bless the Lord. Do a study through 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, through the 14th chapter. Bless the Lord. And say, Holy Spirit, reveal unto me what you want me to understand and what you want me to know. Hallelujah. Through these, the 12th and the 14th chapter in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And you know what? If we're sincere, God will be sincere with us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. But you know what? I'm just bold enough to step out and teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And teach on the gifts of the Spirit because God wants to do some supernatural things in this church. And I believe that, listen, there's people in here that's setting on gifts that they need to use it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Bless the Lord. And I believe we're going to see more of this occur decently and in order. Are you hearing me? Now understand something. When people get out of order, look at me. I'll let you know. I will let you know if, if I don't feel that, you know, this is right. Bless the Lord. We've had some, some funny things take place. People People try to take charge of the service, and I had to jump off the pulpit and escort them out during service. I'm not afraid to do that if the Holy Spirit 
prods my heart to do it because when somebody's taken away, listen, from the ministry of the Word of God and trying to put focal tension on them and what they're doing, look at me, that is distracting. And as being a minister standing up here preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and somebody back there doing flip-flops and, and handstands and what have you, hear me, and everybody's sitting there looking at them and never listen to a word that I'm preaching. Can I tell you something? That's nothing but the devil. And you've got to stop it. You've got to nip it in the bud. Because if you don't look at me, if you don't, it's going to run rampant through the church. Hear me. So there's got to be order. Paul come to the church at Corinth to put order in the church. A church with no order in it, look at me, it's a crazy church. <laughs> That's Marble Town talk. It's a crazy church. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Understand something, folk. Praise God. These gifts are for the body of Christ today. They have not been done away with. We've just seen it right here. For the promises unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even in the United States, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Is God still calling people today? Amen. Have you been called to be a child of His? Yes, well, then the gifts are for you today. Right. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We'll conclude with this next Wednesday. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Stand your feet. We're going to close. Bless God. I just trust that you get something, glean something out of it. As I said, get the CDs or DVDs. Bless the Lord and just go over them, re go over them and over them. You'll get more out of them. Hear me as you go back over them and listen. Hallelujah. Very carefully to what's being said. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you for the teaching tonight. Help us, Lord. To, to teach with authority, help us to teach, O oh God, uh, uh, with clarity and not uh, confusion, Father. And we truly thank you and we praise you, Lord, for what you put forth tonight. Help us, Lord, not just to be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word in the name of Jesus. For we believe, God, you're doing a mighty work in this church. And, Lord, we believe that you're organizing this church in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we thank you for the uh, orchestration that the Holy Spirit gives in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Lord bless you.